Hi, my name's Nicole with So Much More, and in today's video, we're going to be making the bunny block. Look how cute these blocks are behind me. We're gonna be using these really great fabrics from my own online shop, and I just love this pastel bundle. We're also going to be using the True Cut cutting system, and I'll show you just how easy it is to do this. Let's get started. This lovely bundle of fabric was pulled from my shelves for this project, and I love the pastels, and it just really makes me excited for spring. I'm using the True Cut cutting system. The rulers and rotary cutter work together to help provide an easier, safer, and more accurate method of cutting. You see, on each side of the ruler is a track that works with the guide on the rotary cutter. As you move the cutter along the ruler's track, the guide keeps the cutter from veering away from the ruler's edge. I'm also using a straight cut cutter with a 45 millimeter quick change blade. This straight handled rotary cutter is perfect for most projects. It has a textured side grip for safer handling and comes in three different sizes. True cut rotary cutters also feature more blade exposure, which makes it easy to cut through thicker fabrics or more layers of fabric at once. Now I'm only cutting two layers in this video, but I'm able to stack fabrics and cut more if I wanted. Now that we have our fabrics cut, according to the pattern measurements, it's time to start assembly. The first thing we're going to do is snowball the corners of the bunny face and the bunny ears. And we'll do this by laying the background squares on each corner of our face block and our ear blocks. I'll be using my TL 2010Q straight stitch sewing machine to assemble this quilt block. My extension table has a grid glider on top with markings that help me snowball my blocks without having to draw a line. And I'll show you what I mean when I start snowballing these blocks. The grid glider is a great accessory to add to your extension table. You can easily lift it up and place it back down to gain access to your bobbin area. And I'll be using a regular presser foot to snowball the corners of the bunny face and the bunny ears. So I'm just going to add that foot to my sewing machine. Before I begin stitching, I'm going to make certain that I'm aligning the top corner of my background square with the needle hole on my base plate and then align the opposite corner of my background square with a line on my grid glider and this will give me a perfect diagonal stitch. Now obviously you don't have to have a grid glider to do this stitch. You can always eyeball it or and hope for the best or you can draw a diagonal line on each and every square. I used to draw lines on all my snowball blocks before I got my grid glider, so now I'm just saving time which means that I can make more quilts. These little squares can get a little fidgety, so in order to keep this still, you might want to dab a dot of washable Elmer's glue on the tip of each corner. And these corners, and we're going to get to what we do next, but these corners are going to be cut off anyway, so you don't need to really worry about ruining the quilt block by dabbing a little bit of glue if you need it. Now I'm not using glue, I'm just going slow enough to keep everything together. If you don't have washable Elmer's glue, then you can always use a lapel stick or even a stiletto to keep things together as you stitch diagonally across each tiny square. As I mentioned before, we're going to be trimming off each corner of our snowballed blocks. The True Cut ruler has several different markings for a multitude of measurements. The lip of the ruler actually measures 1 8 of an inch, which is perfect for trimming the bunny ears. 
I've trimmed these at a quarter of an inch before and I find that it's too much fabric for such a small corner. So I trim the bunny ears at an eighth of an inch. But when I get to, see, it's just, it's super tiny. And, but the markings are clear, so that's very, very helpful. Um, so like I said, I do trim the bunny ears at one eighth of an inch seam allowance. And when we press, we're gonna be pressing those over next. And it's nice not to have all that additional, even though an eighth of an inch of fabric is not a lot, but these are tiny little corners. But when we get to the bunny face, I do trim a regular quarter inch on all of those markings can also be found on your true cut ruler. And from these trimmings, you're gonna have a whole bunch of half square triangles. And some of these pieces are so incredibly tiny that I just toss them. That's just what I do. What are you guys doing with these little trimmings? After we've assembled and trimmed our corners, we'll head over to the ironing board and press our corners out. And I like to use my Aliso iron. It gets super hot and helps me press out these corners. It also has a great amount of steam and can be refilled with just regular tap water. I don't have to use distilled, which is really nice. But before I press these corners, I like to set the seam and then press them out. And since the bunny face and bunny ears are white, I like to keep my seam allowance towards the background fabric. Let's take a look at how this block comes together. Now, while your pattern gives you step-by-step -step illustrations on how to assemble your block, it's always nice to kind of lay things out to see which pieces go into which place. One of my favorite things about this block is that you don't have to nest any seams. That's always, it always takes a lot of pressure off the assembly process when you don't have to wonder which way you need to press for next steps. Back at the sewing machine, we're going to change our presser foot to the quarter inch foot. And I'm also going to be using a line, there's a quarter inch line, on the grid glider so that I can be doubly sure that my seam allowance is perfect. There's a few different rows to this block assembly, and I'm gonna start with the bunny ears. So there's a skinny strip that goes between each ear, and we're gonna sew that on first. I like to give myself a couple of stitches for back tacking, and then sew a straight quarter inch seam. And you see there is a line right there on the edge of the grid glider that I'm using to follow. And my quarter inch foot also helps keep the fabric at bay. Now I'm going to fold that open and add the next piece or the other bunny ear to the other side. I'll be following the same process as before, just back tacking and following the quarter inch seam. And this row has two side pieces and those are sewn on just like the middle row was, back tacking at the beginning, following the quarter inch seam and then back tacking at the end. And then finally for the other side to complete this row. And now that I've got the ears done, I'm going to sew this next row, which is the bunny face. And it's just gonna be the same way as before, but you know, I realized that I just became unthreaded, so I'm gonna quickly rethread this. And this machine comes with a needle threader, which 
you didn't really know that you needed one of those until you have a machine that does that. I can't imagine going back to a machine that doesn't have an automatic needle threader. So continuing on with piecing the bunny block, we'll just go ahead and add those sides to complete this other row. This is really coming together quickly. It's a super easy block. And again, I love the fact that there's no nesting seams. Now, before we add the top and bottom strips, we do need to press all of our seams so that they're nice and flat. When we put these blocks together, you're going to want to have those nice flat seams. Look at that bunny block coming together. Now, I will add some pins on this step. You don't have to. I just like to keep everything nice and tidy when I put these two units together. And when I put these units together, I'm really trying to make sure that my fabric pieces don't fold in the wrong direction. I'll go ahead and add my top strip and my bottom strip. And um, I'm going to use pins just because it needs to stay put. And now for one final press. I'm pressing this middle seam open, which seems like a whole lot of extra work. I just don't like a whole lot of bulk when it comes time to quilting. So I do take that extra step, but you could iron it either way. It's really up to you. That was so fun and easy to put together. Didn't it turn out good? You know, you can make one of these or you can make a lot. See, I made a lot of these into a whole quilt. It's super fun and easy. Head over to my website and get your pattern and let's start making some bunnies.